the formidable robots. I've always been a pop culture junkie. My shelves are lined with DVDs, everything from cult classics to various TV shows and cartoons. But lately, I've been on a mission to add Beetlejuice to my collection. So last Tuesday, I was at Walmart, browsing through the bargain bin, when I found it. A Beetlejuice DVD, just lying there. Except right away, something felt, off. The cover looked homemade, printed on a sheet of A4 paper. And the craziest part? There was no price tag. When I asked the employee, she shrugged, and told me to just take it. Free movie? I didn't argue. When I got home, I popped the DVD into my player. Usually I'd expect a DVD menu, but the movie just started instantly. No studio logo, no FBI warning, just, bam, Beetlejuice was already causing chaos in the Maitland's house. It was weird, but whatever, maybe it was just a bootleg copy. But as I kept watching, things got, stranger. The scenes didn't seem right. It was subtle at first, a few lines of dialogue missing, scenes that jumped too quickly. Then other scenes were completely cut out, replaced with brief flashes of static and distorted twisted audio. At first it was just creepy background noise, like whispers layered on top of one another. But then it got worse. During one scene where Beetlejuice's face stretches into a monster grin, the audio warped into a deep guttural growl, so loud and distorted that it filled my whole house. Then about halfway through the film, the impossible happened. I noticed something, different. Beetlejuice looked familiar, like he was someone I had seen before. And then I saw his face. My heart nearly stopped. It wasn't Michael Keaton. It was Barry. No, not Barry B. Benson from B-Movie, who is played by Jerry Seinfeld. My childhood friend Barry, dressed as Beetlejuice. Same wild hair, same outfit, but it was him. Every detail was exactly right. He looked like he'd been part of the original cast, like he'd always been there. It was seamless too, this wasn't some hack editing job. It was like he'd somehow been in the movie all along. I couldn't breathe. I hadn't seen Barry since college, not since we graduated back in 2019. We'd keep in touch online and through text. But now here he was, on my screen, grinning at me in that manic Beetlejuice way. The film continued, but it wasn't the Beetlejuice I remembered. Barry became the killer, slashing through the characters one by one during the wedding scene. He laughed as he dragged Lydia across the floor, smearing blood on the carpet, stabbing and dismembering everyone in the Deets house. By the end, he was covered in blood, surrounded by a pile of lifeless bodies in the Deets living room. He turned to the camera, his eyes locking onto mine, and smiled in a way that made my skin crawl. Then the screen went black, and the DVD ejected itself. I just sat there, staring at it. The case was still lying there. My hands were shaking. I didn't know what to do, so I slid the DVD back into its case and shoved it in my bedroom closet. I wanted to forget what I'd seen. Maybe it was some kind of prank, an elaborate joke, but I knew, deep down, that wasn't possible. After a while, I decided to message Barry. I mean, it was crazy, but I needed to know, was this some kind of messed up joke? But when I tried texting him, the messages wouldn't deliver. I tried calling, but the number wasn't in service. Then I went on social media to find him, but his accounts, they were gone. No profile, no posts, not a trace of him. I didn't sleep much that night. The next morning, I woke up to find my closet door open. I know I'd closed it before going to bed. I checked inside, but the Beetlejuice DVD was gone. I searched the entire room, looking for any sign that someone might have broken in, but there was nothing. No open windows, no forced locks, nothing. Confused and on edge, I thought maybe I was just losing my mind. To calm myself down, I started scrolling through my phone, looking through old photos, thinking I could find a picture of me and Barry to reassure myself that he was real, that we'd had all those years together. But every single picture of him was gone. Every memory, every shot from college or high school or even before, he wasn't in any of them. It was as if Barry had never existed. I still don't understand what happened. I don't know if that DVD was some kind of curse, or if Barry's face appearing in Beetlejuice was my mind playing tricks on me. 
I guess I'll never know.